It's Remnant, but with a two. The two in this instance means drugs. This game is Remnant on hardcore raging steroids. Let me not get too far ahead of myself though. Welcome to Remnant 2 in a nutshell. Although this video is a spoof, it will contain spoilers, you've been warned. The game starts us off with this random NPC having a random, awkward conversation. If I wanted to feel sorry for myself, I'd have stayed with your father. What the fuck are you talking about? Naturally, while gallivanting around in this post-apocalyptic hell, we were bound to find ourselves in a sticky situation. All hope is lost until plot armor kicks in, where we're saved by these people whose names I forget, so we'll call them Seven and Eleven. Eleven has telekinesis powers that she uses to stop the monsters and save the day. See what I did there? But Unfortunately, our friend, the random NPC, has contracted the ick and is going to die. Help! Please! Someone! I'm going to die! F to pay respects to the random NPC, big sad. Let's go back to the ward where we meet old man Ford and get a big sword as a participation award. So you wanna be a gangster. I call him Old Man Ford because he's revealed to be like 700 years old, give or take a couple hundred years. Eleven, the telekinesis, telekinesis. Eleven, the telekinesis chick from before, is also mega old, but they don't explain why. For some reason, it's necessary to wake up the big rock, which then eats two people. I can't make this shit up. It just so happens to see both of the old people, so now we have to go all life alert and save them. If you're thinking to yourself, none of this makes any sense, well, you're not alone, I'm very confused. I guess we embark on this journey all alone. There's at least 40 people in the ward that could go with us, but they explicitly state that they have better things to do, like standing around, examining this metal thing, or staring at a book. Not reading, staring. Thankfully, co-op is a feature. If you want a buddy, you can have a buddy. But wait, there's more. It's like a ShamWow commercial. You can even have a second buddy to make a triangle of buddies. Ready, go. This dumbass. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look Just... at you late to the party. <laughs> Alright, ready? Three, two, one, go. I didn't. <laughs> 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 Look at this How many ass. idiots does it take? To... <laughs> but wait, there, there's no more. Mm. You're only allowed to have two friends. Sorry, we're full, bro. So the three musketeers embark on an unforgiving journey of death and destruction. Why are you in your chonies? Don't judge me. This Dark Souls with guns is actually a great bit of fun. The gunplay is smooth and introduces a bunch of really unique guns and melee weapons. The melee is greatly improved upon when compared to the first game, but you can't just do a melee focused build because more than half of the enemies can fly. I can't hit anything. Get it, buddy. You <laughs> yes. Nice. It really looked like you were trying to get him a stray mosquito. <laughs> the game for the most part runs pretty great, although we did run into some NPCs that weren't quite there. You guys are like doing a little dancey dance. <laughs> I can't believe this. Throughout our journey, we'll spend a lot of time going back and forth from the worlds to the ward in order to upgrade our- Oh shit, you're still alive? While exploring, we found so many secrets. This game's secrets have secrets. From puzzles to dungeons to the random off-the-path areas to discover, it's very easy to get lost, especially if you have the directional skills of a toddler, which I do. Thankfully, the other two musketeers are no-life losers that beat this game three times over before even playing with me, so they were able to guide me in the right direction. Finally, we found the old lady and she's hanging out with a giant eyeball. Again, I can't make this shit up. We still haven't figured out where Ford is, but honestly, no one seems to give a shit. The big ass eye tells us to find these shiny things in order to progress through the store. I, I mean, to save the world. While out in our world saving adventure, we got to talk to a lot of crazy people, fighting all sorts of enemies and bosses, which was sick. Remnant 2 is actually pretty brutal, it's hard. We were struggling through a lot of it until Kopak brought out his broken build, which if you wanna see a showcase of, you can find that video at the top right corner of the screen. Boop, right there. Oh look, we found all the shinies. Woohoo. Wait. What happened to the giant eyeball? The game just expects us to ignore the fact that it's been replaced with a glowing man. What's on his face too? That shit looks like Tarzan's loincloth head ass. Anyway, we got all the shinies. We give it to the non-eyeball glowing man and boom, right? We saved the world, right? When the corruption spread, the door to their realm was closed, even to me. He's still talking. New development, we now have to go fight a an evil tree. You've heard of tree huggers before, but you've never heard of tree killers. Wait, those are just lumberjacks. Welcome to three badass lumberjacks take on evil tree. Burn, bitch. Oh. Oh. We gotta hit him right in the trussy. Oh. 
bro got young. Oh shit. Let's go. Alright, that wasn't too bad. We finally saved the world. After all of that, I think we finally did it. We finally saved the world. Clementine!